Hello and welcome to Modifiers 101. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and today I'd like to show you how, when and why to use modifiers in Blender. Well, we should probably start with what is a modifier. Modifier is a way of non-destructive modeling. So non-destructive modeling means you can keep your original mesh, you can do a bunch of stuff with it, and if you're not happy with the results, you can remove the modifiers and you end up with your base mesh. So it's a very, very safe way of modeling. So that's the main advantage. The second advantage is a lot of things are much easier to animate using a modifier than without. I don't think there's any way to move a complex characters with just shape key or like stop motion. You pretty much need an armature and the armature is one of the modifiers. So those would be the two main reasons I can think of to use modifiers and of course because they are also really convenient. So let's have a look at the categories. Uh, we're not going to look at the modify modifiers. We're looking at the generate modifiers and the deform. We'll cover all of these, every single one. But these are physics simulations and the only reason they are in the modifier stack as well is so they can interact with other modifiers. Now let's have a look at what non-destructive does. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press, go here and then use the bevel tool and bevel all these edges. Like so. Okay, now I'm happy with that. But later on I find out this is way too wide. So I cannot go back in and fix this because this is called destructive modeling. This is not worse per se. It's just uh, you can't undo it. So if you're very sure that you that this is the width of the bevel you need, then just go ahead and do just that. But if you're unsure and you know that maybe at a later point you might want to change your mind. What you can do is use a bevel modifier, which does pretty much the same thing. It rounds the corners, but now at any point in time, later, earlier, whatever, we can change this value back and forth. And if we don't like it at all, we can remove it. So if I go back into edit mode, you can see there's no additional geometry that's been produced. All this is basically behind the scenes. You can't see any real changes, which is actually a very good thing. Because as I said, with this method, you can come back at any time and change the values. I'm going to leave it fairly big for the next demonstration. The modifiers all work in local space. I can't think of one that doesn't at the moment. And local space means you can move the object around and that doesn't change anything. You can rotate the object and you can see the bevel modifier doesn't do anything. If this was world space, that means the orientation, rotation and position of the object make a difference. This is local space, so they don't. What does make a difference, however, is the scale. For example, if I scale this only along the x-axis, you can see this becomes really irregular. And same if I scale it along the y-axis. You can see this is probably not what you want. So this is because you can see the scale is irregular. The scale is 4 in x, 1, 1 in the others as well. So the effect of the body modifier, the amount here, does not get altered in y and z. So we still have these bevels you would expect. But in x it's way stretched. So if we apply the scale, that means we now have 1, 1, 1, and Blender just moved the vertices so to fit the new dimensions. You can see that the bevel modifier now acts like we would expect it to again. So that's the main thing you have to watch out for with the modifiers. If you're scaling irregularly, they might get very strange. And if you're scaling uniform, you can see this all stays relative. So the bevel has the same ratio to the object, no matter how much I scale it. If you want to scale it down and you realize, oh, I can hardly see this now, you can go ahead and make this larger. So that's something to keep in mind. All the modifiers work in local space. 
the next really important thing is the order of the modifiers. You can see if I add another modifier here, see it becomes a stack, which is called the modifier stack. But depending on which modifiers you use, there can be a huge difference. Let's add the cube again, and let's add the bevel modifier again. And this time let's top it off with an array. The array modifier has a offset. We get to all these values in later tutorials. We have an in-depth series already, which is in 2.79, and we're upgrading it to 2.9 as we speak. So the array modifier creates copies of your object, and the bevel modifier bevels the vertices. And the array modifier has something called object offset, and the object offset lets you use a control object. And this is the next point I want to show you. We have uh, this empty, you can't see it right now because it's right in the middle of the screen, hidden by the cube, and now you can see it. And you can see the array modifier here has this offset, but you can also use an object to offset it. And if I choose the empty here, nothing happens because the empty and this, the first cube, the center point, is the same. If I rotate the empty, you can see all the instances that follow get offset by the rotation. And the same applies to the scale. And at this point, you can see again, this is probably the way you want it. If I drag the bevel modifier below the array, you can see, of course, the, the width of the bevel is the same for all cubes, even though the cubes get smaller, because first we duplicate the cubes and then we apply the array. And while we're duplicating this, the cubes, we're taking into account the scale of the object. And if we change the order, first we bevel and then we take into account the scale, which means we're scaling the beveled version down. So that's control objects. Let's have a look at a modifier that cre that needs what's called vertex groups. I inserted the monkey, right click and shade it smooth. And I'm going to add a modifier that's called a mask. Mask modifier is to quickly hide geometry, whether it be an arm under cloth or just hide geometry while you're modeling because you want to model on the inside of your object. But you can see it just hides the entire object, which is no use. So what you can do is go to the data properties here, the little green triangle, and we can create a vertex group. And if we go into edit mode, press tab and go into edit mode, or you can choose it up here, and we can now assign vertices to it. Let's just quickly uh, select the eyes because that's easy. I'll assign it to the group. Nothing changed except for the monkey is now completely there instead of completely hidden, which does look better, but it doesn't help me. So what you need to do is select the group. Once you created a group here, the entire list, you can create as many as you want. The entire list will show up in this drop down as well, and I can choose the group. So now only the eyes are visible. And if I invert the influence of the group, you can see the eyes are hidden and the monkey is visible. So that's vertex groups in a nutshell. You can select single vertices, assign them to a group at any point in time, and then the mask modifier or the other modifiers that rely on vertex groups will be able to take them into account. Let's once again get back to our cube array. I'm going to use the bevel because I just like the cube much better when it's beveled. I'm going to put the array back on and just uh, increase the count and the offset a little. Okay, so mesh objects aren't the only objects you can put a modifier on. I can use a busy curve here and I'll scale this down and move it to the side delete this and okay now we have the curve modifier and the modifier for the curve can 
for example get a wave modifier I like the wave modifier because it does this and you can see the modifier is animated by default so if you wanted to recreate the wave motion that would be rather complicated so all you need to do is get, is get the wave modifier and adjust the value so why am I showing you this on a curve because what's the difference or the fundamental difference between having modifiers on a curve and having them on an object and you can see it's this little button so these buttons are fairly self-explanatory if you toggle this off then the bevel modifier won't show in render if you toggle this off it won't show in viewport and if you toggle this off it won't show in edit mode so we talked about edit mode already it's very important and you can see if I'm out of edit mode you can see the bevel in edit mode you cannot so by default this is usually on for most modifiers so if you want to change your object and immediately see what it looks like when you change something in edit mode you need to make sure that this is enabled if you have a subsurf modifier that can slow down your viewport if it's if it's on there uh, while you're editing your geometry and then just go ahead and disable it while you're modeling all right so those are those three buttons but this one is probably the least known of them and it says apply on spline which sounds kind of weird because the entire thing is a spline so apply on spline means it gets applied before the next thing calculates the curve so basically if we use a curve let's hide these and add a curve modifier and again we have a control object so we can use this and I'm just going to move it along the x-axis so it's in compliance you can see the curve is doing something and if I go into edit mode and change the curve you can see my chain of of cubes is following the curve but the curve even though it's animated it doesn't change the modifier so if you choose to apply this on the spline that means the modifier of the spline will be calculated first and everything else after and for example this is very important for spline IKs because if you don't have this on the armature will be calculated first and then the curve so it won't have any difference on the mesh and same here if I don't calculate this before I calculate all the other modifiers on non splines you can see that this won't have a difference okay now that we have talked about these buttons there's a last one there's a drop down here you can of course be quickly move this to the last position if you have a ton of modifier it might be faster than dragging it down there you can of course move the last one to the first position those are self-explanatory if you duplicate it you make a copy that has already has all the values you've chosen here applied to be the same so that's the difference between adding a new one and adding a copy and the two more important ones are apply and apply as shape key so if I have this construct let's uh, actually let's one more time create a cube and bevel it because it's much easier to see it on this example so if I go into edit mode and turn this off you can see the modifier is gone if I apply this you can see if I go into edit mode the changes have been made permanent so that's destructive just as the tool was that we used right in the beginning so you can see the modifier is gone and the changes are made permanent so that's very important and if you have one of these modifiers they deform and that means I can apply them as a shape so if I apply them as a shape key that means wherever the deformed vertices were put by the modifier they will also be put by a shape key if that doesn't make sense let me uh, quickly show you what this means I'm going to apply this as a shape key and now the modifier is gone but if I go back here you can see I have a base and a wave and if I drag this up you can see the 
modifier is gradually being applied again. So this is still non-destructive because if I go into edit mode you can see I still have the basis. And also I can influence the modifier or change the influence on the entire object without using vertex groups whatsoever. So that's very handy if you want to blend in between modifiers or uh, states or just there's probably tons of other situations in which this comes in very handy but now let's apply the bevel modifier and you get an error message because a modifier can't be applied to a mesh with shape keys that means as soon as you have one or more here the basis already counts as one by default you don't have any so as soon as you have one shape key or more you cannot apply a modifier that is from the generate category. And that is simply because the generate modifier creates additional vertices. And if you create additional vertices, you can't add them to all the shape keys because this shape key does, has no idea what to do with, with the additional vertices. This shape key only knows where the current vertices are. So applying a generate modifier which actually generates geometry generates vertices or in the case of the mask it deletes vertices or cannot be applied on a mesh that has shape keys all the other generated modifiers they can be applied as a new shape key and you can also save a shape key save a shape key basically just means you create another shape key but you don't delete the modifier so that's also pretty handy you can just toy around with the values and save shape key after shape key. So that was modifier 101. I hope this gave you kind of an overview of what Blender can do when it comes to non-destructive modeling. And as said earlier, we are going to have a look at all the generate and deform modifiers. So if you like this kind of content, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming modifier tutorials. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, we are very proud to announce that the Cycles Encyclopedia has been updated to 2.8. It took us quite a while, but that's only because there's so much exciting content. If you're interested in Cycles whatsoever, go ahead and check it out. And again, thank you for watching.